inside America's boardrooms. The informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources, and your host for today's show. We're going to be talking about shareholders ramping up disclosure requests, what boards should focus on. And we're happy to have back our proxy and disclosure export expert, Ron Schneider, who's the Director of Corporate Governance Services for Donnelly Financial Solutions. Welcome, Ron. Thank you, TK. Pleasure to be here. So, no surprise to you, but it seems like everybody is jumping on this sort of disclosure bandwagon. And whether it's further disclosure on board evaluations or CEO successions, seems like investors really want to know what is going on in the heads and, and of the board members and in the boardroom. So what should people, what should boards really be focusing on right now when it comes to disclosures? Okay, and you did mention shareholder requests for disclosure as opposed to SEC disclosure requirements. And I think that this private ordering is a positive thing. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we've been, you know, I think driving it a lot is the increase in indexed investing or in IR talk, passive investing, where you have firms like uh, Vanguard, State Street Global, and BlackRock owning a greater, and others owning a greater percentage of corporate America. And these are firms that, in effect, are permanent investors. So, whereas an active manager has, if they don't like, certain corporate practices, they could choose to either engage the company on those or sell the company. Uh, the uh, index investors don't have that option, so they feel obligated uh, to engage the company and, and try to improve the portfolio companies and the value of those uh, companies. And I think that was a, uh, was, I think what got a lot of people's attention was previously lightly regarded um, environmental proposals. Uh, for the first time, three passed last year at three major energy companies. And uh, this was due in part to a change in the, uh, to, to voting support for the first time by these index investors. And what drove that was a, a switch from the traditional focus of shareholder proposals on corporate impact on the environment to rather what is corporate sustainability going to look like in the current uh, you know, uh, situation of environmental change. And so when you have that discussion, you are now uh, talking directly about shareholder value. So once it's about, you know, shareholder value, then these investors got interested, now they support those proposals. So I think that boards need to recognize that this will be an accelerating trend uh, since these major investors are going to support more of these proposals. Proponents are going to come out with more. Uh, and um, I think we're going to see a continuation of the trend where proxies are not limited to uh, SEC requirements, but rather there's an increasing percentage of voluntary or contextual information, whether it be talking about strategy, talking about CSR disclosure, talking about board diversity, in addition to the traditional compensation and, and board related issues. Yeah, it's hard to call the index funds passive anymore with as active as they have been on uh, requesting information from um, uh, companies. Um, but let's talk about, you brought up diversity for a second. There's a perfect example where uh, the New York City pension funds are pressing for to make sure that there's a matrix. They want, it, they want all that disclosed about gender and diversity in that matrix as well. Um, I think it was you that had mentioned to me that probably a good thing to do is have people start putting pictures, uh, photos in the proxy. Well, uh, you know, there are, there are still many companies with um, no women on the boards, okay? And that's not to say the boards aren't functioning well, but uh, that really stands out at these investors that do believe that gender and other forms of diversity are a good thing and lead to improved corporate uh, performance. And so, uh, I think what you're going to, so we, we've seen a, a an increase in skills matrices even before the New York City funds 
effort, most of the increase in matrices have not been the traditional two-dimensional check the box, this director does or does not have this skill. They can be effective, but they can lead to political problems. Who's going to tell a certain director that you really don't have that skill in, in the sense that we mean it? And so we're seeing a big increase in what I've called matrix light, which is more like bar chart showing these are the critical skills that are on the board and this is the number of directors or percentage of the board with these skills. It still shows the presence and prevalence of critical skills on the board, it just avoids that direct association with who does or do, does not uh, have that. And when I talk to companies about their proxies, and still about 50% of companies don't include director nominee photos in the proxy, and they'll say, well, they're in the annual report, but then when we, I, I drill down a little more, not wishing to antagonize them, just understand their thinking, they'll say, well, as you can probably imagine, our board is not very diverse at the present time, and we don't want to highlight that. So uh, I understand that, um, but you know, with this greater focus on diversity and um, you know, gender and, and other forms, ethnic, racial, and other forms of diversity, uh, you know, if the board does have a, a medi meaningful amount of such diversity, even short of naming, you know, and, and so-and-so is an African-American and so-and-so is Asian, I mean, photos can pretty clearly tell me, you know, gender and, and between that and the name, some ethnicity. So I, I do think we're going to see a few more companies uh, realizing that, you know, maybe photos aren't such a bad thing. Yeah, well, the, uh, you know, we're certainly going to, you're going to see the pressure because with what State Street has done, you know, going to be withholding votes against, uh, for gender reasons on companies that aren't stepping up to the plate and what the New York City pension funds, we've seen what they've done with proxy access. So we know with that kind of investor pressure, certainly you're going to see that pro cropping up in, in uh, uh, disclosures in the proxy for sure. So while we have you here though, so that's what's sort of going on currently, what you should focus on. Let's, let me ask you to look into your crystal ball for a minute though and take a look at what uh, might be sort of the disclosures du jour. What's coming down the pike, if you will, from your perspective? Well, we all know it seems apparent now that corporate America's favorite, CEO to median employee pay ratio, it's on, okay, unless something amazing happens. And so companies have been preparing for a while. Uh, I think uh, they're also prepared to deal with the internal HR issue of half their employees are going to learn for the first time that they're paid below the median at their and half above at their companies. And then how investors and proxy advisors actually use that information is to be seen. I think the greater impact will be in year two when there will be trends and context and the like. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But they'll have to describe that in the proxy. Um, their position and their policy and I'm sure we'll see after year one all that evolve. I think you'll see more context you know where you know uh, this is why it's like this and we're looking to you know uh, this is how it fits in with our strategic plan and that kind of thing. Um, speaking about strategy um, compensation will continue you know, as part of the compensation discussion but primarily CEO pay. Uh, the, um, the biggest question investors have had uh, at the index and other investors about pay, which is a complicated topic, is tell us how pay supports strategy. That's their overarching question, and that's not an SEC requirement. And so we are seeing, and to answer that question, you can't just talk about performance and pay outcomes and alignment with performance. You need to remind people or tell them for the first time what the strategy is. So over the last two years, we've been seeing more companies explicitly talking about, and even having sections, how pay supports strategy early in the proxy, in the cover letter, in the proxy summary, or at the beginning of the CDNA. So I think we're going to continue to see more um, of that contextual information. Uh, other things that are uh, heightened scrutiny, uh, the pay setting process, the engagement process, okay, um, the um, board evaluation process. These processes traditionally were described in, in text, okay, and, and some of the text was uh, frankly uninspiring. Uh, it might be, some uh, company might say, uh, we put a lot of importance on board oversight of risk. We talk about it at every meeting. It's, it's very important. That could look like boilerplate. It could be sincere. You can't tell just from looking at that. Then you have the next generation where many companies are at, which is expanded 
textual disclosure of you know these processes and and give it a little more insight you know still not letting them all the way into the boardroom but uh, you know, here's how the process works. Here's when it starts, here's what happens, and then here's what we do with it. That's very important. And here's what we do with the information, okay? And then the third generation, and we're see, I've seen my unofficial tally reviewing many proxies year to year is about a doubling of this, is companies then going beyond the textual uh, and adding visual elements, a timeline, a flow chart, a process flow to show Q1, this is what we do, Q2, or step one, step two, step three, final output. So uh, I think we're going to continue to see more visual elements. Basically, I think we're entering the golden age of proxy disclosure in terms of combining content with design. And, and many companies are working proactively to get ahead of investor concern. So if we have a strong independent board in this environment of activism, telling that story effectively, if we're moving towards more diversity or there's been recent refreshment, you may not like where we're at right now, but give us credit for where we've been. And, and so showing, highlighting diversity. We've had energy clients that for years have been having four or five pages of disclosure about their CSR profile because they're responsible, they're proud of it. And they may have that CSR report over here, but they want voters front and center to know, to know it, and that's why they talk about it in the proxy. So we're seeing companies, um, you know, if they have a strong record on these uh, issues, talking about them. I mean, if you're engaging with your investors, why would you not talk about that and let people know, other than just the investors that you engage with? So uh, some are doing that, I think, as uh, kind of a, a spear to let p p potential activists or proponents of issues know that, look, we have a strong record on this, so if you want to you know, file a proposal at our company, we have a good record, you're not gonna do that well, so you might wanna pick another target. Yeah. Well, Ron, it's always good to make sure that we keep pace with this. There's, it's institutional shareholder driven these days, so I'm sure, and we don't know what's gonna happen with the new SEC on whether there's gonna be things piled on top of that, but we can certainly look forward to more disclosures going forward, and uh, hopefully, again, they will be useful to the investor and I want to thank you again for taking the time to come in and joining us. Sure thing. Yeah. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take a look at another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC along with content contributors Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodrich and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.